Hey everyone, welcome to Geeks for Geeks. I'm Ishan Sharma and in today's video, we'll be taking a look at how you can get started with freelancing. Let's get started with this video. So if you recently learned maybe web development or Android development, and now you want to start earning in college and you just want to have some experience from your skills that you've learned recently, what can you actually do? You can either get yourself an internship or you can get yourself like a freelancing uh, gig or client. Okay. Now let's talk about freelancing over here because I've already covered internships in a previous video. Take a look at that if you're interested. But today I want to talk about freelancing. Before you get started with it, ask yourself this question. How do you want to represent yourself? What will you actually be? Will you be like a front end developer, a back end developer, full stack, and development, whatever that is, just think about that for a moment. Then what you want to do is that you want to have your own portfolio. This is really important. If, if you're going for like an internship or you're going for like a freelance gig, you need to have your own portfolio that you can show to someone. Okay, these are the projects that I've done. This is the experience that I have. Certificates won't help you. So don't show off your certificates to any recruiter or to anyone who is trying to find someone who can do their work. So that's really important. The next step would be to ask yourself, how do you want to get your first client? Okay, now there are basically two ways that you can do that. Either you can actually start networking with people, you can start cold emailing people, or you can start using LinkedIn, which I'll talk about in some time. Uh, or what you can do is that you can use a lot of these freelancing platforms. Now you can just go to these platforms. There are plenty of them. You know, you have Fiverr, Upwork, Freelancer, People Per Hour. And uh, basically you can just go, you can create your own profile and you can start uh, bidding on the projects that someone else has put up over there. And then they get to choose whichever one uh, should they prefer. Okay, so that is one way that you can get started. Now the thing is that these platforms are overcrowded. There's just too much competition, right? There are a lot of people on these platforms and there are not enough people who want to give their projects, right? So what you need to do is that it will take you a lot of time to get started. But once you are at that level, uh, maybe you've done like a hundred projects or something, then you can start charging a lot more. But starting off, it will be really difficult. You need to cost cut. Basically, you need to make sure that you are charging way lesser than what other people are charging. And that is how you will be chosen, right? You will basically need to make sure that you are filling in all the buyer requests uh, when we're talking about Fiverr. But essentially, you will have to work a lot harder to get your first client, right? That's what I think. I don't think it's like a, it's like the best way for you to get started. But of course, if that is the only way you want to go, then that is completely fine. It might take you a lot of time though. It depends a lot on luck also. <laughs> so yeah, just, just make sure that you know about this. The next method, which I believe in a lot more is networking. You can just talk to a lot of people. You can create content on LinkedIn so that people will say, okay, uh, this person seems to be equipped with this knowledge and, and the skill and we would actually want to work with them, right? So you can do some things like that. You can also start messaging these people who are running some businesses. You can also start emailing these people and that way you can get your first client. Now, one question that many people ask is how do we know how, how much should we actually charge, right? How much should you charge or in the beginning, should you even be charging people any money? I would say that you should try to get the first client, no matter if you are getting paid or if you're not getting paid, because that first client is crucial to your success as a freelancer. Let's get that first, second, third, just a few initial clients. It doesn't matter if they pay you or if they do not, if they do pay you, that's amazing. But just make sure that you have those first few testimonials. These will be the first promoters of your work and your skill, they'll leave some reviews on your profile or just give it to you in like a letter. And they can just say, that, okay, I worked with this freelancer. The work was amazing. Um, he was or she was very quick with delivering uh, whatever work I wanted them to do. And that will be amazing for you because then you can start showing other people that, okay, this is what my work has been. This is what other people have to say about my work. And so I deserve to be charging this much. You can charge on a per hour basis. You can also charge in like a value basis. Now you need to decide for yourself how much value would your project bring to that particular business. So then you can start charging based on the value. Or you can just say that, okay, I have like a $10 per hour uh, maybe rate. And so let's say a project will take 10 hours for me. So that cost would be $100 for that particular project. 
So yeah, it depends on you. At the end of the day, it's really important that you retain those customers as well. Let's say someone gives you some work to create a website. They might need you afterwards to make some edits to the website or do all of these things. So that is why it's really important that you maintain relations with these first few clients. One more thing to remember is that whenever you're using like a website, Fiverr, Upwork, whatever, you want to make sure that your gigs or whatever you put up over there is optimized properly. There is something called as SEO optimization for these freelancing websites. You want to make sure that you are mentioning some keywords. Let's say you have some sort of a gig which says this, I will create a simple e-commerce website for you. Okay, now you need to make sure that you are specifying a few things that they might be looking out for. Cart can be an example, e-commerce, uh, payment gateway can be an example. So all of these things you want to make sure that you have them and uh, in that description of that particular gig and then you make sure that you have some pictures as well that are appealing to the person that is looking at it. So that's just really important for you to keep in mind whenever you're getting started. And yeah, that's just basically what I wanted to cover in this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, this is really interesting. You should definitely try freelancing. It is a lot more rewarding. There are some risks as well, of course, like with other things, but you will get to learn a lot. You want to make sure that you are timely when delivering your results. You need to make sure that you are delivering as soon as possible. Okay, make sure that you always under promise and over deliver. This is really important because you can just say that, okay, um, this project might take me uh, two days to make and you can just give it to them in about one day. That will leave a great impression uh, and they would be a lot more willing to work with you afterwards as well. So yeah, this was just a quick video. I hope you enjoyed. Um, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. And yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.